Hey y'all, Mike from Square One Farms. Uh, I started a little project back behind me and I didn't even think about video in it uh, until I got to this point. So I'm gonna catch you up uh, on, on what I'm doing. We're building a smokehouse. Uh, I'm, I intend to make this to where I can mainly uh, cold smoke meats and cheeses uh, for a preservation, but I think I'm going to attempt to try and add a hot uh, smoking apparatus on the side of it. Anyway, let me catch you up to what I have done so far uh, and we'll go over my whole plan on how I'm going to go go through this and, and etc. Alright, so what you see here is I have, well you can't see it from this angle, I have a dog, a backhoe attachment for my tractor and that has helped immensely. So I felt a little bad that I hadn't shown you this process, but I mean, it's just digging a hole. So right here is where the smokehouse is gonna be. All right, I've dug down just a little bit, gonna put some gravel, concrete on top of it. Uh, down this trench here, where the barrel is, there will be 10 foot of six inch stove pipe. And then uh, I've already, the barrel's not ready, I haven't cut any holes or anything, but uh, just put it in there. Put some gravel down on the, on the bottom uh, to help with drainage. Uh, last thing I want is rust issues and, and uh, hopefully this thing will last me a long time. But there's the barrel. I have a little platform here uh, that I can step in in case it gets a little muddy or whatever since this is a trench. But I, all this goes downhill and hopefully I've given a relief here hopefully whatever water um, builds up will drain that way so that's where we're at uh, so the very next thing that I need to do is attach all of my stovepipe connect uh, pieces together they only came in two foot sections we couldn't get ten foot of stovepipe best we could get was five two foot sections so I'm gonna put all those together uh, I'm gonna go ahead and screw them together because they come unattached, unfolded almost. Um, so I'll screw them together to help hold those together. Uh, and then we'll start working on cutting our hole in the barrel and leveling up our ground gravel. Hopefully we'll get to concrete today. Uh, it's not looking so good. I've kind of got a late start today. Anyway, let's do that and uh, uh, I'll take you along for the ride. Okay, I've got you all set up on a bunch of bags of concrete here. These are how these stovepipe come. Uh, and the best way to go about putting these together, i found, uh, without getting cut up, is kind of bend these in just, just a little bit. Can you see this fold line? I've kind of got a line here from bending it. You kind of bend that in and make that a little more flat. And you do the same thing on this other side. All right, and then you're going to want to just line these up and kind of push and get those things seated in there. And like that, they're in there. Now, like I said, I, when I put the rest of the sections together, I will uh, screw it together kind of here and here, make sure that they don't come apart. Uh, this is all going to be buried underground, so... Uh, probably not a huge issue but I don't really want this opening underground and then dirt falling in That is it. Now I'll get a 90 
I'll put the 90 on. Uh, it's an adjustable 90. Look. All right, I'll get this adjustable 90. Uh, you can adjust this to whatever angle you need. Uh, and I will put that on and screw it once I uh, have it on the ground and know exactly where I want it. Okay, so I brought this big behemoth over here to show you. There's two things that I want to do when I put this in the ground. One, I want those seams on the bottom. Because uh, I'm going to put a little gravel in the bottom. But I don't want water seep. If it was turned this way, I don't want water seeping into the seams. Uh, and getting in my pipe and then eventually running down into my barrel. Also, I want it turned the other way. So... I also want my downhill, I want it to run downhill like this in case water, upside down, in case water does come in, it over, it goes this way instead of with the seams, you know, water would infiltrate that way. So I want to be kind of particular on how I put this in, uh, on, the, on the ground, in the trench. So I'm going to do that real quick. up there right where I want it uh, draw a circle around and then we're going to take the uh, the barrel back to the shop and so that I can put a hole in it and I'm going to show you how I do the front as well all right I'm set up uh, in the shop now I've got the barrel sitting right in front of me I went ahead and used a soapstone to draw it out a little better so that you can see it uh, this is going to get a little loud, a little protection here. Uh, I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut it out. You use whatever you want to. Uh, you can use, I guess you use an angle grinder, uh, plasma torch, uh, whatever. I'm just using what I got. Uh, so I'm going to cut out for the, for the stove pipe and then I'm going to show you how we deal with the front of the stove. outside, uh, start attaching pipe and, and start dealing with the outside stuff again.
basically how it's going to look. Uh, got to get that ring around that lid and, and fasten it on. So now I'm going to attach that pipe. I'm going to level everything up uh, underneath the pipe and uh, start working my way that way. Uh, get the elbow on and start checking checking depths and, and all that uh, for our finished surface level of the concrete and uh, go from there. A few key things I want to go over that I think are important that may, I may or may not have covered uh, earlier. Number one, we want our pipe to go uphill. Um, I'm guessing right now we're at maybe a 15 degree incline. Um, I watched a YouTube video and they said 10 degrees was best. Uh, I got a book online from Amazon about building a smokehouse. They said 30 degrees was best. Uh, I'm somewhere in between there, probably. Uh, it, it's pretty good. Anyway, moving on. So we want our seam. Let's focus here. Okay, on our pipe, we want our seam on the bottom of the pipe and we want our pipe to overlap where the um, the overlap is on top going downhill water would flow and not get inside the pipe okay also down here in our barrel I've got my barrel kind of sitting off the ground right now man it is bright out here uh, what we don't want is for our barrel to be slanted with the front up that's going to inhibit your smoke from going out the back and uh, also if there is ever any water to get in there it'll make the water go to the back corner and you don't want that if there's any ever water get in there you I don't know what I just said there. Uh, if there's water to get in there, you want it to come to the front, especially if you have a lid. You can just take that lid off, keep it drained. Um, anyway, so you can go level or have the back up just a little bit, and uh, that'll help everything out a lot more. So, moving on. So now we've got I've got all these gaps under this pipe, and I want to support it well. Um, I'm going to get a little dirt under there, but mainly I'm going to get gravel.
Okay, so I um, it's it's the next day, and I've kind of been dinking, uh, getting the gravel leveled out, getting it to the level that I want, uh, and kind of got the forms up. I've got to screw it all together and and get it together. Uh, I'm not the guy you want to learn on, uh, learn how to. Uh, pour concrete and do all that. It's just boring stuff. It's probably the most boring yet most labor-intensive part of this whole build But uh, I'm going to just going to get this done and uh, I will meet you when I am through Well, it has been a couple of days. I did the concrete and uh, Then it went from 85 degrees to a high of like 51 for the last couple of days and raining uh, they <laughs> they didn't even predict the rain. Like it rained for 16 hours straight. I'm glad I got the concrete, or it got it got solid before the rain came in. Uh, so it's been a couple of days. I'm just now walking out here, and this is the pad. Now I ran into some problems. Uh, if you see on the right hand side here of my form board, that's how big the slab was supposed to be. I brought uh, 10 bags of concrete and it only did a 4x4 four four area. So that, so my smokestack or my, my pipe there is not in the center, which isn't a big deal. It's just kind of irritating. And my structure isn't going to be as big. Now I, I guess I could add some more concrete and uh, make it bigger. But I had questioned if it was too big in the first place. See, here's a mock-up of of it and just to see i mean that's plenty of room to hang some some deer hams or whatever uh quite a few of them in there that's going to be plenty of room so i've got enough uh cinder blocks and a few a uh, few extras that hopefully i'm going to learn how to cut in half to fill in the gaps i've got a three foot bore uh door already made up that I'm going to use. So today is masonry day. I said, hang on. I said masonry day is it is a block laying day, whatever it's called. I don't know the proper terms. I've never done this before. Now there are three things that I hate. That's asphalt, shingles, carpet, and concrete. Those are the three that I usually uh, just hire out because I hate doing that stuff. Uh, but this was such a small one and as you can tell I still don't know what I'm doing because I couldn't even get the correct uh, number of bags but uh, the next thing is masonry um, laying these cinder blocks and uh, doing that I've never done this before so uh, you know I'm sure there's gonna be a whole lot of critics hopefully they're constructive critics and not anyway we are going to uh, start this project and uh, you can follow along and watch me learn right along. Maybe you're learning too. Let's do this. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it
Okay, so as you can see, I've got the masonry done. Uh, it's not pretty, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's a smokehouse. So I've taken that uh, the rough cut uh, white oak, and I think there's some red oak in there uh, uh, that I sawmilled up about three years ago. I planed it down, or halfway planed it down. You can see it's not, you know, it's it's all it has to do is be uh, equal or better quality than you get from Lowe's. All right, so the lumber doesn't have to be that good. It just has to serve its its function. Uh, back here, I've got, uh, this was not the original design, this gap here. Uh, this was, I, I ran out of these top blocks. So I, I had a couple of these smaller blocks and now I decided maybe I'll just use it as a an opportunity to have another vent so that's all I'm doing we'll see I mean worst case I I have to plug it up but so that's where we're at now I'm about to uh, attach I've already started drilling holes up here where I'm going to attach uh, my concrete anchors and then that's what we're gonna do Okay, so we've got uh, that finishes these rafters. I've got all them secured. They're they're 
ready to go. Once again, I did the Shu Sugi Ban, Shao Sugi Ban, not sure how to pronounce it, on these just, just as a way to uh, preserve them. Uh, and now I've got my lath boards that are going to go on top, the 1x4s to um, give me something to screw the metal to uh, for the roof. I will also be burning them. Uh, just at this point, it's just kind of for, for appearance sake. Uh, anyway, so that's where we're at. Uh, I've got all this ready to go, and uh, we are closing in on on everything. About to uh, get the roof on, and then I will be hopefully have enough one by fours and one by whatevers of white oak to to do the the wood siding. Anyway, let's keep moving. that uh, grunting as our pigs is almost feeding time they get a little crazy so you may hear them also you hear all that popping sounds like gunshots in the background every once in a while that's when the wind really blows uh, we have everything we have has metal roofing on it and uh, uh, almost everything we own is you hear that everything we own is sitting next to a big oak tree mainly white oaks and you know they put off the big acorns so they fall on our metal carports or whatever and boy they make a they make a sound uh, that's what that is. Okay, so I've got all this white oak uh, that I'm going to put on the side of the smokehouse and it's kind of weathered in gray. Um, what I think I'm going to do, because the more that I burn, uh, this wood uh, the more I like it as far as the smokehouse is concerned so I think I'm just going to lightly burn the the outside of all this white oak kind of give it that uh, look like this smokehouse has been in operation for years but uh, I think it's gonna look pretty cool I've already started burning a little bit uh, and and I think the, the outcome is gonna be really nice so uh, that's what I'm gonna do it's gonna take a little time but I went ahead uh, and bought a weed burner my old weed burner broke uh, the, the the hose broke on it and once I mean the whole thing is pretty much rendered useless unless you've got the tool to put crimps on there so I uh, went and bought another one and uh, hopefully make this this process a little faster
Okay, so uh, I really like the look of this. It brings out the, the saw marks, you know, from my sawmill, uh, the, the bandsaw blade. It brings those marks out. I think this is going to look really good. So now all I've got to do is fit them to the sides, um, make sure that I cover the top there, uh, and we're just going to cut them and, and, and attach them. Simple as that. And boom, just like that, through the magic of editing, the smokehouse has walls up on it. Uh, and a door. How fantastic, right? Well, okay, so I apologize. I haven't been real uh, good about recording this whole process because I've been working on it for like 20 minutes at a time and then I'd run and go do something else. Uh, I'm, I'm digging up some stumps over here. Uh, anyway, so we have a door here. I had a door on hand and it kind of fits. So I cut it down to the best I could and here we have it. So now I have the, the boards up all the way around, the door on. Uh, I just have to put on the batten, uh, and then I think it'll be, yeah, it'll be time for a test run. We're gonna uh, probably start a fire and see how much she leaks. <laughs> Look at the smoke rolling behind me. I went ahead and set a fire. Uh, I, re I really wanted to see, I was chomping at the bit, uh, see where all it was going to vent out at. Um, with the board and batten, if it was tight enough, etc., etc. Uh, and I couldn't be happier. Now I've got a really hot fire. Are, are y'all staring at the sun? I've got a really hot fire going uh, down in the barrel right now. Because for a couple of reasons, one, I really I wanted it a lot uh, smokier than it would normally be, probably for a cold smoke. But uh, also, whatever's in that barrel, I want to burn out any kind of paints or anything that may have been in that barrel. I want to go ahead and burn out before I uh, put any kind of uh, meat or food uh, in there. So there we have it. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit for you. Uh, you can see it is venting out the top like I had hoped. Really beautiful. This is just, this just makes me so happy. Uh, I still have to work on a door latching thing other than a, a shovel. But sorry if the sun is bad, y'all. So on the back side, you see I did all the board and batten. And on the back side, I decided not to do the batten. And as you can see, it's actually not an issue. I'm, I'm not getting hardly any smoke coming out of the cracks. It is just coming out up top like I had hoped it would. So, you know, it, I was a little worried throughout this whole process. You know, I build this whole big old thing and then I've got 10 feet of pipe and, and my barrel here. And I was really worried that the smoke just, I wasn't gonna get a good enough draft to uh, make all this work. But now that I have, I can go ahead and backfill all this and feel comfortable that my creation is working. And so this whole design was almost completely out of necessity. Uh, it, I didn't draw this up. I just pretty much grabbed what I had on hand. It's where the cinder blocks came in. All right, that cinder block is sticking out because like I said before, I will have a uh, another barrel out here for uh, a hot smoke operation in there as well. I've just got that cinder block sitting in there to um, block the hole while this is working. So anyway, uh, white oak, uh, everything, that's the very last of, of all my lumber that I had on hand. All my 2 by white oak and red oaks and all that, everything has pretty much gone into this project. All my cinder blocks except for a couple have been used. Uh, so really the design was, was mainly out of necessity. But as you can see, it is working really well. I mean, we are just rolling some smoke and typically for a cold smoke operation, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing this, but, uh, right now it looks really cool, but I really wanted to see all the little gaps that, uh, smoke may or may not be going through 
and see if I have to fix anything and, and I'm perfectly happy with it. So I'm gonna leave this video as is, y'all. Uh, maybe I'll do a continuation video when I do a hot smoke barrel. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but for right now, you know, I always thought that um, once I had a smokehouse, I was going to be a real homesteader. You know, that was um, kind of my thing. And now I have it and I don't know that I feel any more homesteady. But uh, I definitely am happy with the results and very glad uh, to have this. Uh, cheese and deer are probably the first things that are going in there. And then after that will probably be... Uh, will be the piggies. They're just right on the other side here. Whoa, I'm getting smoked out. I can't hardly breathe. Anyway. Y'all, this is Mike with Square One Farms, and I am just going to, uh, look at that. I'm just going to leave this video as is and just enjoy the beauty of my creation. Y'all have a great day.